So, after eight hours detained at Tullamarine Airport, four nights in detention at a quarantine hotel and a series of court hearings over three days, Novak Djokovic is, as they call it, outside of the court, a free man and preparing to defend his Australian Open title. To take us through what's transpired in the Djokovic case today, I'm joined now by Sky News reporter Joel Philp. Joel, those Serbian fans at the court today, and you were with them, they treated Djokovic's detention as if he was indeed locked up in prison, didn't they? Yeah, that's right. Look, this was really a much, as much about Serbian nationalism and Serbian pride for their national hero, Novak Djokovic, as it was about anything to do with his vaccination status or ability to comply with the federal government laws. There was very much a focus here on hoping that he can indeed win the 21st Grand Slam and become the greatest men's player of all time in terms of the record. So there was a focus today, not just on showing their support for him, but while the world's eyes were on this community, on showcasing their culture, on dancing and singing and all sorts of dramatic stuff related to their society. Now, of course, what we saw when, when that verdict finally came through were cheering and applause and then prayers outside the front of the course. So it was a very dramatic turn of events and they believe that their national treasure is going to be motivated by this turn of events to actually have more energy to win the tournament. That is after he has been detained for quite a few days now in this situation and has not had the typical treatment that the world's number one tennis star would be used to getting. So Joel, the party's gone from the court to Fed Square, I can see. Uh, they are truly in party mode, are they? Yeah, absolutely. There are good vibes here at the moment. They said that the after party would continue on into Fed Square. They've got drums and things are continuing. It was a great scene that we saw earlier. Now, the real situation now becomes... What is the political fallout to some extent? While Novak Djokovic has the ability to focus on sport, to focus on the Australian Open, which kicks off on uh, January 17, there's going to be political fallout for the Australian government. Now, they've been very strong on their wording, of, of course. It's not just been a focus on the procedures of this, but there's also been some politicking involved in the situation, some argy-bargy between the Australian government and the Serbian government. So there'll be some fallout as Tennis Australia continues to reveal, perhaps as they promised to do after the court case was wrapped up, what their version of events was, exactly what the correspondence was between the federal government, the Victorian government and Tennis Australia and what enabled this incredible situation to transpire. And what's really up in the air now is can Border Force stop any unvaccinated traveller from coming into the country? So that will have to be clarified, I would have thought, by the Prime Minister in the next 24 hours. Is there a slight possibility, Joel, that the Minister demands that Djokovic be detained for a second time? Well, that is the way that it could apparently go out according to go down according to the Home Affairs lawyers. They said the immigration minister, Alex, uh, Alex Hawke, rather, would have the potential to overturn that. They flagged that throughout the hearing that he could, for a second time, cancel Novak Djokovic's visa. But what has been ordered by the court is that from within half an hour of the decision, he would be have to leave whatever potential detention that he was hauled up in at that stage and be a free man to roam the streets of Melbourne. Now, what was actually agreed upon in court uh, today, and it, it seems has occurred, was that Novak Djokovic was not actually inside that detention facility. He was watching the court hearing taking part from another facility, and we've just seen a, treat, a tweet recently saying there are now about a dozen Victoria police officers and several private security guards at the entrance to the car park of the officers of Novak Djokovic's lawyers in Melbourne. So it seems like he was taking part in the proceedings from that location. From, from here, it seems he could pick up whatever bags he had in that immigration detention facility and head off to that more private location, indeed, which he'll get access to a tennis court, a private chef, as which he has hoped so we can finally begin preparing for the Australian Open, in which, of course, his fans hope he will win and make history. Yeah, you're not wrong. What a dramatic day. Stunning result. Thank you, Joel, for that, and thank you for the coverage throughout the afternoon.